Okay, we're looking at the, the dimension grading rubric. Now this is from 1405, so what I'm trying to do is get 1405 and all other mechanical classes in line for counting the same points off. It's not fair if you go to another teacher and they count a different number of points off. This should be the same thing through all mechanical. So I'm working with those guys. You can see these here. Um, we got down to this point before I started the video, but incorrect placement or orientation of views. I've seen people project views and then move it up top and it does not change its orientation. You, you need to remove it and make another view. Uh, incorrect placement, uh, failure to mark a reference dimension with parentheses. That's a big one. Because of tolerances, we cannot do that. Mistakes that change a design intent but could be fixed globally by changing precision or rounding. Omitting hidden lines that show that a feature goes through the object. Part number and detail drawing does not match a part number in the balloon or parts list. Mistakes that may create problems for manufacturers. The scale in the drawing title block. So what am I talking about with these? The more serious the mistakes are the more points off. Two points off is the scale in the drawing, omitting center lines, omitting symmetry symbols, lines projected incorrectly. That's like AutoCAD. Pretty in color with monochrome. That is not going to hurt a manufacturer. I'm sorry. But I have never had anybody to say print in monochrome at all times. That's kind of crazy. Um, no date in the title block, incorrect sheet numbering, drawing number, or drawing name, incorrect text style, font, height, locations. Um, minor mistakes, one point off, not extending center lines property, no gaps around center marks or centers of uh, circles or radii around the center marks. Incorrect use of large versus small diameter and radius, radii settings. I'm going to talk about that one right there. Incorrect use of large versus small diameter. You remember when we did that in 1405? We had a large and small style. A large radii and small radii. You know why we did that? To teach you guys how to change your dimension style. The ASME standard does not have anything like that. When should we use a large, you know, go across the middle? When should we pull it from the outside? It does not matter. So just put that out of your mind. All right. Uh, capitalization mistakes. Everything in civil, architectural, mechanical, electrical is all caps. You look at a printed circuit board, you don't see small, you know, uncapitalized text, do you? It's all, everything's all caps. So just keep getting caps left on. Incorrect line weight. That's another one. I'm going to close this door. There are some specifications on line weight, and they are as we said. What I'm going to tell you guys that I've never had anybody check my drawings, even working for Boeing, even working for defense systems, to say your line weights are wrong. They don't really want to see Crayola on a draw. And that's what it looks like to me when you use line weight that's real heavy. So line weights, we may have set them up, we may have used them in 1405, but in industry, I've never seen any company say you have to call, you have to print with the line weights on. All right, just say it. They just want lines. They want certain kinds of lines, they want lines. So uh, incorrect text type. I don't care about line weight, by the way. Oh, not count off if your line weight is not turned on. Incorrect text type. So we have a template that specifies text type. We have a note to start with that specifies text type. All text should be the same, except for the titles of views. That's double your text type and your dimension height. So if we use 125. 0.12 is the minimum text height, right? 0.12. So if I have the view of a part, it should be double that. We got a 125 because an eighth of an inch is very, very common. 
125 texts, 125 dimensions, 125 arrowheads, 0.25. There are lots of 125s in here, and they kind of all correlate. It makes the dimension style easier to remember. The text uh, for our view should be twice as large to notate that that is a view. Just like in 1405, we put the room labels and the guest cottage larger than everything else. Incorrect placement of the dimension. If you put it in, uh, let's say, the diameter of the cylinder has to be in the side view. You guys remember that? Because you're showing the path of that, of that cylindrical feature. You're showing its profile. So that would be something similar to that. Not dimensioning a cylinder. So let's just talk about profile. If you're going to dimension an angle, you have to select two angular lines. But what if you, what if it was not dimensioned with an angle? What if it was X and Y dimensions? We want to dimension those X and Y dimensions still where we can see that you're dimensioning an angle. Because from any other view, it looks like a block. Right? It looks like a, a notch or a protrusion. So improper dimension styles, not dimensioning a cylinder in its side view. There we go. Incorrect dimension spacing. I'm not going to measure how far your dimension is away from your drawing, from your drawing view. There is an arrange button that goes to our dimension style, and we can click on that, select all of our Linear dimensions. It doesn't work with the leaders. So I just do all my linear dimensions at the range button. Bam, they're all 0.4 away and 0.25 apart. But sometimes we can move them further than that. We need more space depending on the orientation of the text. Incorrect formatting of notes. All right. Uh, odd, scale, odd scale ratio noted. We're not going to use odd scale of view heights. Now, I'm just going to take you down through this and show you a couple things. These were drawings when we were in person at um, Northridge that I found in my classroom from a 1405 class that had been turned in and they had A's marked on them. So if you had anybody in 1405 that didn't grade rigorously, I gave this to Doug Smith, and if it was 10 points late, that would be a 63. Now, I want to talk about the difference. I, Doug Smith's great, and his drawings are beautiful, but I'm not here to grade beautiful work. I don't care if your drawings are ugly. As long as I follow the standard, there were some things that he wanted that he was just trying to endorse as first-time drafters. Right? First time making a drawing, make it as best you can. You don't want to turn in sloppy work, but it's not against the standard. So, um, 0.4 minimum spacing, 0.25 thereafter. Unequal spaces, I'm not counting off of that. We have a 0.25 minimum between that. So if it's uneven between this dimension, this dimension, this, and this, I'm not counting off points. That's not against the standard. It's a 0.25 minute. So I'm just using this as an example, okay? Uh, center mark on wrong way or too thick. Um, they drug the center line out instead of having the extension line here. The precision is huge. The quantity is huge. That's two points off. This is old, right? Precision is five points off for each one. Quantity is two points. Can't build this without any material. Plus, we need to ask, we know that's five points. We don't put anything for someone to interpret this drawing by, then there's nothing that they can do wrong, essentially. You gotta buy those parts. I don't care about what section numbers are in here. If you put this in a portfolio, who cares what section number? And this did say class, right? DFTG 14. It's not the drawing number, it's a section number of the class. So if there's three sections, it'd be that one, two, three. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna look at that. I'm gonna tell you what I'm not gonna look at. 
trimming something that's that's long, that's okay, you can count off. Center line is not centered, that's all okay. Yeah. Extending these beyond the largest of the objects. Okay, there's one. Here's another one. And these all had A's on them and nothing marked up. So nobody was getting the any help with this stuff. So the font isn't right. This reference dimension was not in parentheses. Views are not oriented correctly. Hidden line is missing. Material. I'm just going to go, um, I'm going to go over here to this. And I, I have this in your blackboard. Everybody check it out. I made a legend here. So if it says AutoCAD, don't look at it. Because that's manually drawing things. Inventor, SolidWorks, Creo, odd scale ratio. That's when you would have that. All right. You could do that in AutoCAD now using layout. So you see your points off. Dimensions not in the best. Uh, descriptive view. No dimensions to hidden features, even center lines and hidden holes. Group X, Y, and size dimension in the same in the same view. If I have a hole located on sheet one of the 13 page drawing, on sheet five I have the on the X dimension on sheet one, on sheet five the Y dimension, or the size of the hole on sheet 13, somebody's going to be pissed. And I say this over and over. Because it takes them forever to find just the information on that one hole. Try and group the X, Y, and the size in the same view. No dimensions in the in, on the material. No lines through arrowheads. And I don't I don't think you guys have seen that before. But if you cannot see exactly where someone's pointing, that is not clear. I've been I've been called on that in the in the field. No lines through dimension lines. The lines that surround your dimensions. Misspell words. Gaps around center marks. All caps. Incorrect text type. Incorrect placement of dimension. Dimension spacing. Dimension cylinders of protrusions in the side view. Proper extension lines. You know, this is what we came up with. So I want to show you guys. Um, let's see if I have it in here in Blackboard. So I'm going to go to this. And I wanted to show you guys this. So we just got a little bit. Here's a drawing checklist right here. You see it in Blackboard? So you could just look that over with your drawing. And now we're going to get into the meat of this um, exercise. And I'm going to start, start this. And so one thing that we usually do is we set up a template, but I've set it up for you. I want to go over where those settings are so that you remember that. It's very important that you guys know how to set up software. I mean, I was thrown into a company one time and they made me set up the drawing templates and everything for their company. I didn't remember how to do that. And in Creo, it's like I had to create the, the config.profile that had all the search paths and everything in it for everybody to use. I didn't know, how to, there weren't any books on that. I had to figure that out. So it's very important to do that, to know how the software works.